Hi, my name is Candice Biondo and I am the Program Director of Foster360. Hi, my name is Robert Bloom. I'm the Strategic Planning and Resource Director for Foster360. Hi, I'm Claire Goldberg. I'm the Lead Navigator at Foster360. Um, I work with the youth on a daily basis and um, since navigation is one of the key components of Foster360, it's, uh, it's my whole life. When I'm out there speaking to various groups, I always start with the same story. I ask people to show me by raise of hand who has children. And most of the time, about 95% of the audience raises their hand. And then I ask them to imagine their child or children at the age of 17 and a half. And I ask them to imagine sitting them down and saying, well, it's been a ride. Certainly. I've enjoyed being your parent. It's been amazing so far. But my job as a parent is reaching an end. I'm, I'm ready to transition now to being childless. And, you know, you're reaching an age where you're going to need to find a job. You're going to need to think about going to college because nowadays without that piece of paper, it's going to be very hard for you to, to build a career. You are going to need to find a place to live. So here's a piece of paper with some resources and not all of them might be right. We may be off on a couple phone numbers, but that's a good start for you. Thank you for being a part of my life and good luck. This is going to be amazing for you. My name is Robert. I am currently 19 and I am, as you would say, aged out of foster care. I really feel with aging out and being told you're kind of just done, I feel like you're almost kind of thrown into the world. You're kind of, it's almost like a sink or swim situation. You're thrown into a big pool and if you don't swim, you're going to end up down at the bottom. And I feel like really, you feel hopeless at that moment. You feel like everybody's kind of just left you. It's like, oh hey, you've aged out. Go on, find your resources. <laughs> and it's like, Without that, without like any kind of net to lean on, you really, you really start to kind of give up. They're 17 and a half years old, living in a group home, and they're petrified. They are scared. And yet, when you look at their support system, they have up to seven people engaged in their lives, whether it's a caseworker or even several caseworkers, behavioral health um, caseworkers, therapists, mentors, and despite having all this support, they don't know where to go, they don't know what to do. Aging out, I really feel like you kind of experience a lot of uncertainty, like where am I going to go next, like how am I going to find my next home? 70% of these kids are going to wind up on the streets, in the criminal justice system, uh, enslaved in the sex trade industry, or worse, and by worse I mean dead. It became apparent to me that I needed to create a program that was solely focused on providing coordination of the services that surrounded youth in foster care. So that's why we called it Foster 360. So we are looking at our clients' lives from a 360 degree perspective. There are many other resources that many youth don't even know, like how to sign up for college or really how to get benefits that they have, they're entitled to for being within foster care. There's just nothing that really tells them about it. This is totally unacceptable. This is our community and these are our kids. I ran into uh, Mark Young, the CEO and president of Mesa United Way. And as we talked about our various initiatives and our passions, it became very clear that there was an opportunity for us to collaborate. When I told him that I was interested particularly uh, to youth at risk, he mentioned that there was a very, very big issue with youth aging out of foster care. I'm Mark Young, I'm the CEO President and CEO of Mesa United Way. I used to be a, a youth pastor, so I worked with a lot of young people and then found myself in this role at, at Mesa United Way and um, working with Helen's Hope Chest. I've always been really concerned about 
junior high and high school kids and how they get lost in the shuffle, especially when it comes to foster care and with uh, group homes. My name is Katie Pompey. I am the executive director at Helen's Hope Chest. For any teen, it's difficult to navigate social responsibilities, school responsibilities, whether or not they have to get a job. All of those things compound to create stressors in a teenager's life. For a youth in foster care, there are added stresses. The effects of trauma, um, many youth have post-traumatic stress disorder. They experience mental and behavioral health issues. They don't necessarily know how to create lasting bonds with people. And that's what our kids need. They need first and foremost to be surrounding by loving, caring people. And I can't overstate how important that is. Foster 360 becomes a, a critical aspect, a critical initiative because those students need people that they believe love them and care about them that will help them navigate to get the things that they need while being aware of the trauma that they've experienced. When I sit in the room and connect with the people that are fulfilling the role of navigator, um, it really touches my heart uh, because I was one of those kids growing up with all those challenges. It takes people, navigators, who are willing to be determined that they're not going to take no for an answer, that they're going to find the best um, options for the student, that they have the student's interest at heart, not, not their own interest, not, not the interest of an agency, but whatever that kid needs, we need to do what that is, what's best for them. Our navigators are individuals who will go out there and understand who all is involved in one specific client's life. And once we have that information, we basically coordinate all the efforts. A day in the life of a navigator looks a lot like phone calls and emails starting at 8 a.m., probably even sooner. I immediately contact the youth that I work with to one, check in, but also to, you know, if we have appointments that day, I want to let them know about it and remind them and also kind of check in and see how they're, you know, take the temperature of like how they're doing and, you know, how's today treating them because it can easily impact how our meeting goes if it even happens. If someone's dealing with depression and they can barely make it out of bed, it's probably not a good time then to talk about jumping into a full career or, you know, um, giving them a job that might have a lot of customer service because maybe they're not prepared for that much human interaction. There's all sorts of circumstances that I have to weigh the pros and cons of. What's really required are navigators who act very much like a parent would in a traditional family that guides the child, helps to connect them with the proper resources, does coaching, but in this case has to also perform one very real and strategic role, and that is you have to understand trauma, how it affects the brain, how it affects the emotions, how it affects a person's ability to learn. I'm Dr. Robert Roten. I am the, the uh, CEO of the uh, Trauma Institute International, which was formerly Arizona Trauma Institute and um, I've been working in the trauma arena for most of my career. What is happening is something is going on environmentally that is provoking the body to have a stress response. And it's that stress response when the st body stays in stress for over long periods of time, you see natural, predictable uh, symptoms emerge. And those symptoms generally will fall into two categories. Um, one is a reactive adaptive process, which is always related to an attempt to take control when you feel fearful or stressed. Um, and con the controlling piece um, is always gonna be expressed in high levels of assertiveness or anger or hostility. It's not rational, it's not logical. There's very little self-reflection, very little self-evaluation when someone is in that kind of an aroused state. The other one is uh, a reactive mitigation, which is the body's natural response 
to being overwhelmed by the experiences that the body is having. And what the body has the ability to do when, when the stress is too much and the body can't immediately adapt, what it does is it creates a space. And the space is really between two things, what the body's experiencing here and what the body is perceiving here. And so that space between those two is, is how people navigate. The body senses danger. It reacts as if there's a real danger in their current situation and responds that way. So the typical responses you get is anger and aggression, or somebody who runs away and retreats, or somebody who tries to please. And you have to get beyond all these defenses until you can have a real communication and a safe and trusting relationship where learning can actually begin. What helps aid me on a day-to-day -day basis is um, trauma-informed care training. I am really interested in not only how is, a, how is a youth managing themselves, but also how am I conducting myself in a way that, that assists in the healing process. So the language I'm using, there should be no shame, there should be no blame. There should only be the investment in them without stepping on boundaries or asking for their story. It should be about interacting with their day-to-day -day experience in a way that they feel safe. When we train our navigators in trauma-informed care, inside-out goal setting, creative problem solving, plus we have a community directory of hundreds of services and resources that are available to these kids so we can connect them to the proper resources and services once they've set their own goals. It's not about educating these kids. It has to start with loving these kids and building caring and loving and trusting relationships so they can take that next step. Whatever is taught, whatever is offered in the way of education or support has to be done in conjunction with a supportive, safe, predictable relationship in order to be able to, to, be, able to be fruitful. The more of those safe, predictable relationships that a youth has in their life, the more likely they are to have enough experience to begin to duplicate it. Our mission is to work with any youth regardless of their past, regardless of the level of trauma, regardless of how much modeling they benefited from, we want every youth to have the same opportunity to create a happy and fulfilled life. And that is my personal mission. And that is why it is so important for me to work with very particular people. It's amazing to see other kids who are in group homes and them just be themselves, be goofy, be silly, be very tenacious and stand up for others and themselves and be asking of adults to be helpful. They want, they want to be there. They want to be beside you. They want to tell you a whole story, regardless of whether it's trauma or it's their day. It doesn't matter. They're just there to be a kid. And I'm, I'm really honored to, to have that opportunity to witness a human being just developing. It's a treasure. So I feel like one of the best things in my life that kind of really almost changed my entire life was having somebody to really count on. To have somebody to really be there when you're struggling or when things look at their bleakest. And I really felt that Foster 360 was actually almost one of the greatest people I could really like lean on like as a shoulder to cry on or basically someone I could be there for whenever things looked at the worst. If you've connected with this person they become a part of your life. This is not this is not a job where you get to walk in check it off and send them on their way. This is a relationship that is necessary to help these people sustain and what we need to do as a community is help them find people throughout this community that they can connect with. The things that have always inspired me is one, 
their level of tenacity, their ability to joke and relate to people, their ability to see past the current situation and also recognize the power that they have and the willingness to participate in their own story. I know I'm not going to be homeless because I know I can have resources to go to. I know I'm going to be able to actually eat the next day. Like, I'm not going to have to worry about those. And I feel Foster 360 is there for any of my needs. Nobody sets out to say, uh, I want to be a prostitute. I want to be in jail. I want to be homeless. Nobody sets out to do that. And yet, 70% of the kids aging out of foster care, that's their future. There isn't one person in this community that knows about all the resources that are there. So we're leaving it to luck for the right youth being connected with the right resources. That is the reality of things, and that is the gap we are filling. The last thing this community needs is another program that provides another service because it already exists. What we need is someone out there that knows about all the services available, all the programs available, so that we can connect the right youth at the right time and in the right place, and then coordinate all these efforts as a group. That is what we need, and that is why Foster 360 was created in the first place. Here's the deal. We need support we can count on, so we can provide support our kids can count on.